right, what's up everybody? It is the last day that I will be Amardyking. So I'm in the last field. This is the field that's out here by all the lava rock, kind of near the freeway. Um, yeah, so last, this field I think is 110 acres. Worked about a little over half of it yesterday and I'm gonna finish it up today. So we did have a few things happen um, in the field two fields ago. I didn't film it, but uh, the, the other guy who trades me off, he was turning around at the end and he hooked a telephone pole with the, the paddles, which as you can see, there's no paddles on this side. Still paddles on this side, but he hooked a pole with the paddles and it bent, there's a two inch shaft right here and it bent the end of the two inch shaft. So what we had to do is we took the end paddle off of this side. We took the end paddle off and we were just running without one paddle. And that was going, it was going just fine. It was working. We just had one row that wasn't getting the, the dikes put in it. But when you're not on hilly ground, you don't really need the dikes anyway. So because we're pretty much, the rest of these fields are flat. We are just, we're fine with not running the dikes, the diker paddle on the back. So we were running it and this morning he called me and said that the shaft that held the other three, the shaft snapped. And I'll show you that here in a minute, but the shaft snapped. So I told him just to unbolt it, that unbolt the bearings. There's, there's two bearings on each one. So I told him to unbolt it. So he drove to the end, unbolted it and just dropped it onto the ground. And so we're now running with only three paddles. So we have the three paddles. We're missing four on this side, but it still looks fine. It's not affecting it at all. It's just not putting the dikes in, but this field is flat. So the dikes really are just for when you're watering on a hill, it stops the water from just running down. So I'll go, uh, I'll go show you the paddle that snapped in half at the end of the field here in a minute. But as you can see, we're only running half of them. So looks a little funny, <laughs> but it's still doing a pretty good job. I mean, if you look right here, these rows were not, did not have the paddles. Those rows right there were. So, so those four rows right there didn't have the paddles. So the rows still look good. It really didn't change how the rows look. It still makes a nice row, hills them up good because the part that hills the row, the shanks, is still doing a good job. So, zoom in down there. Still throwing it up onto the hill and dragging it off with that drag bar. So it's still doing a good job. It just is missing a piece. So what we have to do, we have to get a whole new shaft We'll get a whole new shaft and we'll put it back together. Granted, we're really busy right now because I'm, as I'm out here in the tractor, everybody else is trying to get all the pivots going and also the hay is ready. So we're gonna be cutting hay next week and we don't have any of the hay equipment ready. So that's what everybody else is doing is they're getting the pivots going, getting all that set up and ready to go. And then next week we'll be cutting hay. So we have to switch all the bulk beds over to the hay beds and hook all those up and put the sides on. We have to take the tractors. The tractors are still hooked up to the potato planters. So we have to get the tractors off the potato planters. We have, first we have to wash the planters off. Wash the planters off, unhook the potato planters, go hook up the, the two hay choppers and the rake and then make sure the swather is serviced and ready to go. So we've got a lot to do. We don't have very much time to do it. It just seems like farming, it'd be nice to be one of those dry farmers over in the Midwest that they just plant their crops and check them once a week and then they just get to do whatever they want pretty much all summer until their stuff's grown and ready to go. Not us, no, we have 35 pivots to run and we have hay, so that keeps us busy, busy during the summer. It just seems like it's a non-stop, go, 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 rush, rush, rush to get everything done and ready just for the next thing and the next thing. And then during the winter, we get a little bit of a break, but 
it's it's pretty chaotic around here. I'll just hop out and show you these paddles real quick. They they look pretty bad. So yeah, but we'll we'll get it fixed. We just have to get a new shaft. But check this out. So here's the paddles. So what happened the first time, you can see this part is bent. This hooked on a telephone pole. Telephone pole's fine, didn't do anything to it. But it bent it between the here and here. And that caused this one to be, it was still straight up and down, but it was going up and down like this a few inches. So that up and down a few inches weakened the shaft here. So as we continued to run it, you can see it just sheared it right off. So it just wiggled it back and forth just enough that it weakened that and snapped it off there. So we had to go ahead and just unbolt the whole thing. The paddles and everything are still fine. We just need this new shaft. We'll probably get a new a new bearing as well. But yeah, it just it just unbolts right here. There's just two bolts here and two bolts over there that hold it on. So it does look a little weird with only three of the paddles on there, but eh, it still works, still does the job. These still make the hills and throw it up and make it work good. So the potatoes will still have plenty of, um, they'll still have plenty of soil around them to grow. We just uh, won't have the dikes in this field and part of it. So we'll get back going here. It's obviously not ideal, but you know, not everything's ideal and not everything's perfect and things break. So if there's one thing you can always count on on a farm is that things are gonna break and you're gonna have to figure out how to fix it or just deal with it being broken. So in this case, we don't have time to fix it right now. So we're gonna deal with it being broken and we're just gonna keep on going. So this field has three pivots. So there's this pivot here, this is the bigger one. It is, let's see, a six tower. And then there's this one down here. If I can zoom in, there's this one right here. It's a five tower. And then there's this one over here, which you might be able to see through the dust. There's one right over there next to the edge. That's just a little two tower. Now, one thing that is always a pain in the butt when you're renting other people other ground is you never know how they ran their watering system. So we have one field that we're renting that all of our fields when we have a pivot, we have the main power that comes from where the pump's at, that runs, then that runs to the pivot. And then at the pivot, you have your panel that controls like where the pivot moves and everything. And when it, how to turn it, you turn it on and off from the panel at the pivot center. But we have some fields that we're renting where the power is at the pump and also the panel is at the pump. So if you're in a tractor and you're out in the field working the field back and forth, you need to move the pivot out of the way so you can work there. Well, the panel for that pivot to even turn the pivot on to move it is clear at the pump at the edge of the field. So you have to drive all the way to the edge of the field and stuff. So I don't understand that whole setup. Like just put your panels on your pivot centers. And that way when you're at the pivot, you can move the pivot and you're not having to like run back and forth, back and forth, especially if you're in a tractor. And then the other thing with this one, is we have the little the little two tower pivot over here and the five tower over here. Well, the five tower pivot, it sends power to the two tower pivot with the toggle switch. So we're not entirely sure, like obviously you have to run those two together. So we're not entirely sure how that even is supposed to work. So that'll be a learning curve on how to get that to run. But also for some reason we got out here and we, were, we planted this, moved the pivots out of the way, planted it and everything. But then when I got out here, the power to all these pivots was shut off. So somebody shut the power off. Um, so I went over to the pumps and turned the power back on, but for whatever reason, somebody shut the power off. Um, yeah, so moral of the story, don't shut the power off to people's panels if they're not your panels. And uh, yeah, put your, put your uh, control boxes for the pivot at the center of the pivot. So when you're working, in the field, you can move it easy. Now I understand why they would put them over by the pump because during the year when you're watering, 
you could just turn it on and move everything from the pump and you wouldn't actually have to drive out to the pivot center to run everything. But we, on all of our pivots, we're starting to put new systems on that we can actually run the pivot from our phone so we don't have to drive out there anyway. So, I don't know. Everybody just has different setups and when we rent new ground, it's always confusing trying to figure out how they watered their field. So, yeah, that's what we're dealing with. Well, I've been joined in the field by Ray. He's the guy who we hire out to do all of our spraying. And he's just been waiting for me to get done because, well, he would like to get all the spraying done. But there's a problem. He can do like 500 acres a day or more. And I can only do about 60. So I'm definitely holding him up, man. He flies and he's got like a 100 foot boom on that thing. So, yeah. Ray is out here, he's, he's spraying what I did yesterday. Basically, what I did yesterday was I would got just past this pivot, so all that side of the field, and this is how much I have left, but the rows over here are twice as long as over there, so there's actually, we'll see if I get done today. I don't know if I'll get done today or tomorrow morning, but yeah. Ray's out here getting, what, getting done what he can. He can only spray when it's pretty well calm. It can't really be windy because he doesn't want the spray to carry on to people's yards or different crops and whatnot. So he's out here doing what he can while the, while the weather's calm. He's just waiting for me to get done. All right, guys, well, we just finished that field and it is done. That was the last of the potatoes. So I'm just driving my pickup back to the farm because it's about quitting time, and I don't really want to drive the Dammer Diker because it's about 20 feet wide. It's basically as wide as the road. I don't really want to drive that back to the farm right now because everybody's just getting off work and starting to come home, and the, the road I have to drive down is right by the river. So it's a windy river road, and there's a lot of people that live out here, and I don't really want to have to deal with swerving off the road, missing cars, or potentially getting rear-ended because I've had that happen before. So I am just gonna leave it there and then tomorrow morning after everybody's gone to work, I will have somebody bring me out and we'll, we'll pick it up and bring it home. The, uh, the sprayer is out there still, Ray, and uh, he's gonna finish spraying that and then all of our fields will be sprayed. What he's spraying, he's just spraying an herbicide and we'll water it in and basically it stops any weeds from growing because what we don't want to have happen is we don't want to have weeds grow up and then the roots are competing with the potatoes so that would not be great because then the potatoes would probably struggle and the yields would drop so we want to try and limit weeds so he's out there spraying that which would be good to have all that done and then let's see tomorrow we're going to be getting some of the hay stuff ready and we are what we do in hay next week so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video i'll uh i'll take you to the tractor tomorrow of me driving back a little bit and then i have to clean that thing off and unhook it all right we just got out here this is the feedlot field we have three pivots we have this pivot there's a pivot over there and there's another little tiny pivot over there but we're flushing them and we're trying to get all these pivots running. These guys have already got, they've already got all the other pivots running. It is a little windy today, so sorry about that. Hopefully it's not too bad in the speaker. But yeah, that's what we're doing today is we're trying to get these all running. They have to, they're down there pulling the end cap off. And we just started this one. So there's water running out water running out because it has to pump it the pump the pump is clear over at the other end on the canal so it has to pump it all the way over to here up the pipe and then all the way to the end so you can see there is water coming out of that little sprinkler right there but it's got to fill all the way up and come out the very end pipe and then we have to look for all the ones that are plugged and unplug them all so, this will be great. Great, great thing to do on a 40 degree wind. 
running out which means the line's flushed so shut this off so they can put the end plug back in once they put the end plug back in then we'll turn it on and get it going and check for plug nozzles okay we just started it up also we have our dammer diker here that we also have to drive that back we finished that yesterday so we'll be, one of us will be taking that thing back today too. We got the end plug in, so now we're turning them all on. We got that pivot over there going, but this is the stop for the pivot. And as you can see, it's supposed to be right here and it's not. One of the, one of the planters caught the end of it and dragged it over, so. We got to move this over. All right, this is our solution. We're just gonna kind of pull it over with the uh, the pickup. I mean, that's I think that's close. It's kind of hard to tell. I know the old the where the bar was sitting was right here, so it's like it's almost like the back needs to come, but. <clears throat> that looks pretty close to where it should be. I guess it's try and get it, try and get it pinned back in the ground with a little tiny hammer. For some reason, we uh, we didn't bring any tools out here with us. Just what's in Christopher's Who pickup. Didn't bring tools? Just whatever's in Christopher's pickup is all we got. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's a sledge in the ha in the Dammer Diker tractor over there. Frank, we brought a shovel. It's right there. <laughs> yeah. We've got a few things. So how this works is the pivot tire will come right here and it'll drive up on this. And there's a pipe that sticks out. So the pivot tire drives up on this and the pipe hits this plate and that's what stops the pivot. So if this is in the wrong spot and the pivot, that pipe misses it, it'll just walk over here into these corrals. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on this pivot when it gets walked back around to this side to make sure it actually hits this. We may have to move it a little bit, but I think it's close. There's just one pipe. You can see the scratches on here. That's where it's been hitting. So I think we're close, close enough that it'll probably hit, but we may need to move it just a little bit more. But now we're gonna go get the Dammer Diker paddles that broke. And we're gonna try and put them in the back of this pickup. Tam said that they shut power off. All right. We've got this here. And there's five of us. We're gonna try and lift it into the back of this pickup. And luckily, I have my tripod today. So I'm gonna set it up and you guys can watch us struggle. Because it's definitely gonna be a struggle. Broke that, right? It snapped that. And then you just 
sides it's up and down. Okay, we got it. In here. I thought we were gonna have to get the uh, skid steer back here to get this put in here, but we got it. With enough people, you can do anything. Now we have to go get a pivot way over there, a little pivot over here. Back going. Okay, that pivot is the one we just turned on. It's running, there's only one drop that's missing the nozzle and it's just shooting a straight shot out. So, you probably can't see the pivot. There's a pivot way over there. So we have a little one and then a little bigger one to turn on. I'm glad we were able to get all those pieces loaded up. But we're on our way to the next one. Josh and Trevor are headed over there to the end to pull the cap. And we're gonna walk out here and see what we can do about turning this thing on. Now this one's missing a bunch of nozzles. Like there's one missing right there and right there let's see where's another one. Oh, there's one missing right there and then there's a couple of drops that are just completely broken off of this one so this one's going to be spraying out all over the place we're going to have to bring some nozzles and drops and get this thing patched back up but let's walk out there and see what it looks like now <laughs> we've all seen the videos of people saying oh farmers spray the most harsh chemicals on the field and you can't go out in the field for a week and all this stuff Ray literally sprayed this yesterday with herbicide that won't let anything grow except for potatoes. And I'm walking through the field, so all those people are lying. The chemicals aren't so harsh that you can't go in the field. Those people are just hypochondriac, paranoid people. It's fine. Not only are a couple nozzles busted off, but there's a plug busted off underneath there, so we're gonna have to get a plug for that too, but we'll flush it at least. get it going. I'm going to turn this down to zero so it doesn't move because it's on a hundred right now. We'll let it flush. as can be. Ah! There we go. Now it's going to drain all the water out that we just put in it. I'll put the cat back in, but we can't turn this one back on until we fix it. So. Yeah, it's just going to sit here for a little bit. And to run that other pivot, it actually runs off of this panel, so I don't know that we'll be able to do anything with that until we finish getting this one fixed. Because we're just putting this drain plug in that was on the bottom of this. And we'll have to go back to the shop and get all the drops and nozzles. I think there's three drops that have broke off this pivot. And there's two nozzles that are gone. So we have some repairs to make. And we, we have to do that before we can even go out to this other pivot that's right there. To even flush that one because we can't turn, they have to run together. So we can't turn this one back on until it's fixed. We can't flush the other one until this one's fixed. We gotta make a parts run. And we're not gonna bring as many trucks out this time. <laughs> we don't need three trucks out here. So we gotta run back to the shop, get a bunch of drops, a bunch of nozzles, and then we'll be back out here in the field to get everything fixed. Hey, make sure you go down below and hit the subscribe button. It really helps us out. Trying to figure out, we could chain it and lift it out. We're just gonna, we're just gonna drop it out. Hey, 
didn't break anything. It did, uh, it did take a little chunk out of the concrete. <laughs> That's okay. Didn't hurt the tailgate, we're good. That'll be something we'll have to fix at a later date. Well, we're over checking on some different pivots. Like that one's end gun isn't supposed to be on. And this one's end gun isn't turning off and it's spraying this house. So there's a solenoid up here that turns the end gun on and off. So Trevor's gonna climb up there and see if it's plugged. Because they can get plugged, they can go bad. But there's a bunch of stuff that can cause the end gun to not turn on. So we can't have our pivots spraying houses. That one, if it doesn't turn off, right now it's watering where this pivot will hit that stop right there. Right now it's watering where that pivot's gonna stop. So the potatoes right there in that strip would get over, way over watered. So we gotta make sure that that one will turn off as well. But for now, we're gonna check the solenoid. All right, we got it. We, uh, I should have filmed it, but yeah, it was sprouting out. There's a little, there's that red thing right there next to the end gun. It's a valve, it's a bladder. And it goes to a solenoid. And the solenoid was kind of plugged, but also the, the little tiny hose that goes to it was broken. So we got it kind of unplugged, fixed the hose, and then this started to spray. And then as that bladder filled up, it just dropped off and now it's off. So it's good to go. We need to check and see if that one is uh, plugged, but that one's not as critical. So we might just leave that one for today and go and get some other pivots going that need to be going. All right, we're now back down here at the feedlot field. So what Trevor's taking off, and man, it has gotten way windier, so sorry about that. But what he's taking off, this is, it's, we call it a gooseneck. So it goes on to the top of the pivot, and then we have these long drops, all these, that come and hook into that, and then that's what we put the nozzles on. So he just took the gooseneck off because it's got a broken off piece inside, and he's going to put a new one on. And then we have a couple new drops here with some with some nozzles. So he's fixing, he, he's getting this one done. Josh just did one over there. We have one more gooseneck to work on, and then we have a few drops that just don't have nozzles. So that's what we're working on, on this pivot. And then we'll we'll turn this one on and see if there's any plugged ones. And then we still have to go over and turn on the little two tower pivot that's over there. So that's what we're working at. Oh, Craig just was walking around. He just caught a snake. Look at him. He's so kind and gentle. He's not right. That's what he is. He's not right. We do have wildlife out here. Nice, nice fat boy. Yeah, he is pretty fat. Must have just ate. Because <clears throat> there's lava rocks right there. All those little looks like hills, that's lava rock. And there's rattlesnakes out there. That's where they can stay. And uh, yeah, I'd prefer them to stay over there and not over here where we're at. That's where the water snakes go. Right, we're uh, ready to start this thing. We fixed the other ones. Craig just put on this other drop. Or I guess it wasn't a drop, just the nozzle. And I'm gonna walk over to this panel and uh, turn it on. We'll see how many plugged ones there are. I don't think there was very many last time it was on, so I guess we'll find out. All right, it's going. Doesn't look like there's any plugged ones either. So we just gotta go get this little two tower one over here going and then we'll be done. Okay, they uh, just dropped me off. I'm back in the tractor here with the Dammer Diker. I've gotta drive this back. It's gonna take about 45 minutes. Um, Hopefully I don't get rear-ended again on this windy road, because that would not be great. So wish me luck. All right, guys, finally got this thing back. I only had to swerve around a few cars. Didn't, uh, didn't hit anybody, luckily. But yeah, I think I'm gonna call this the end of my day and I'll see you in the next one.